Tim. I'm Anna. This is the Geek Up Game Review. We're going to bring you guys a review by Flying Frog Productions, and it is a touch of evil, dark gothic, the deck building game. A supernatural card game for two to six players, ages 12 and up. So let's go ahead and go over to the tabletop, show you guys the box and some of the cards inside, and show you guys how to play dark gothic, a touch of evil. Alright guys, so here we have the box to A Touch of Evil, Dark Gothic Deck Building Game, a supernatural card game for two to six players ages 12 and up by Flying Frog Productions. So let's go ahead and open up this box, show you guys all the cool stuff inside. So there's a rule book. Just a couple page. Easy to read. And then there's a shalu a card. There's a die. There's a die. And then here are some of the character heroes, and these are actual real people put in these. They're not CGI'd or anything like that. So uh, it's kind of cool to see, you know, all these people either volunteer their time or if they were paid to do so. That's uh, the either heroes. Way. I said, no, you said the people. I said the heroes. It says heroes are right there. But anyways, those are all the people, all the heroes. Here we have the villains. There's different stages. You can see here that there's ones, twos, and threes. There's one of each in each scenario, so there's a variety of different scenarios you can have. These are your start cards. These are your spirit. This is your strength, uh, your cunning. And then here we have some Dirk Secrets, which are bad. You don't want those. Those are negative points. And then we have some... And then here's your combat. Shocking Discoveries. Which are really bad. Yeah. And here's a training card. These are like extra currency. That's for the spirit. There's ones for the cunning, and then there's the, these are called yeah. tactical strike. And there's some really cool cards like the musket, where it's got an actual person like <clears throat> going like, ah, with his musket. And then here's the honor. Um, and then this guy. And these are all just locations, minions, events. Yeah, and then here. so. There's that guy. So uh, we'll show you guys. Uh, we'll go ahead and go over to some gameplay and show you guys how to play the game. All right, guys. So now we have everything set up. Anna has her character. I have my character. We have our starting deck. Each player has a different starting deck, and it tells you which of them the starting cards are put there. The rest are put in the box. So my character has four mm -hmm. combat, four cunning, two spirits, and two honor. And mine has one combat, two cunning, eight spirit, and one honor. And then they each have a special ability. My special ability is stealth. Anytime you roll the omen die, which is this, uh, you may choose to re-roll it, but you must accept the second result. And then mine says you may use a spirit as a combat when attacking a minion or villain. So uh, other than our characters, we have the main deck, we have the river, or the pool, or the center row. I think it's called the center line. Yeah, center and then line. we have This is a common minion. Dead. This is the common minion. This is available for you to attack at any time. And then we have the four types of currency, the honor, which are going to be your wild. And then we have training, which is the green we have training of the blue and training of the red so this one has like a gun training this one has your i would say wisdom it's and then this cunning one has spirit and combat cunning spirit and combat and these are all worth two with the purchase of three so the purchase is in the top left hand corner of the card and then what they're worth when you play them are down here in the bottom and the value on the cards in the center line are also right here. And like the silver ones are wild, but you have to use all of the same type. So you have to use five spirit or five combat. 
Um, you can't mix them up. Okay, so I'll let Anna go ahead and show you guys a turn. Well, also right here we have the secrets, and then these are these are dark secrets, and these are shocking discoveries. They're this is kind of like trash for your deck, and then these are like bad at consequences. So you start with drawing six cards from your deck. From your deck, and you have to use all. You don't have to use all your cards, but you lose all your cards. So I had one honor, one spirit. So I've got one, two, three, four spirits, one cunning, and one honor. So I can make this five spirit, and I can purchase this card, and I just kind of lose this. So she purchased the musket with five spirit. Oh, and okay. that is two it equals to two combat or two spirit when you need it. So it'll be Tim's turn. Okay, well I don't think I shuffled mine all the way, so let me shuffle them real quick. And one, two, three, four, five, six. So and I don't I don't recall them by the name. I always say I got a green one, I got a white one, and then I got two red ones, another white one, and another green one. So I got two, two, two. Oh, so. well this came out the last time, and there's a mystery on it. I just saw that. Oh. When those are played, you have to do that immediately. It's Not when they're played, when they come out of the main deck right. and they're flipped into the center line. Each hero must acquire a dark secret. Darn. And these are basically garbage cards, and anytime you can destroy one of these, you're going to want to. So I'll put that in my discard. So two red, two green. So let's do this. Um, oh, I get to draw two cards because these say draw a card. So oh, draw a card do that and draw a card. So that puts me at four green. Alrighty then. Let's do... I don't know. Let's do... Well, shoot. I don't have enough for anything. One, one, one. Now let's see if anything else pops out. And this Let's fight, when you fight one. these, the action comes when you fight the and minions. And you can fight this I really one. don't have. How much is he? He's 1 1 1 1, and you may destroy a card you have played this turn or a card from the center line. Uh, oh, what do I have? So I get nothing? No. Oh, well, that was a waste. Alright, then that's it. You okay. can destroy a card from here. Um, I'm okay. Okay. So I play, I've got two spirit, one coming back, three spirit, four spirit. And I will, let's see, I don't really, I can't really get anything good, can I? Everything's fine. I guess fight. one right here. Discard to block, event remains in play. Okay, so when that circles around. Um, well, this one has two and two with two spirit and two random, so I'll pay the two random and spirit. Get that. And then that will be my turn, and it's Tim's turn. So I'll draw my six. One, and the two, villain, three, what's the villain? Four, Five, two, and four. one. Shuffle. Yes, the villain is the Creeping Terror. Five, two, and one. And this game is a co-op, but there are different things that happen where you are basically hurting the other player. Because at the end, you get to count all the points on the bottom of the cards. And the points you get from killing the monsters. And there's a superior demon hunter or whatever. Um... But you can play completely co-op where the negative things that happen to the other player happen to everyone. Alright, I'm going to take three and three. So I had three red, two blue, one white with a draw card giving me one green. And I bought a intuit, intuitive hunch and a brilliant deduction which gave me uh, two green and two blue which will be recirculating through. 
And I got my dark secret come up, so I destroy this card to take a shocking discovery, which it actually destroys it, so we'll have a separate pile for that. And this says, roll the omen die. Discard a number of cards from hand equal to the roll. So one, I discard one hand. One card. <laughs> one hand. Discard one hand. Cut it off. <laughs> and this gets discarded. And so I discarded this one. I get one, two, three. This is a location, so it remains in play, which is cool. And then... So I've got four, can't really do anything with that, so I'm gonna go and try and add my combat. So um, do you get that blue every turn for that location? Yeah. Yep, it remains in play, which I have a really bad habit of putting it in my discard pile. And that's not um, the location, by the way. What? Oh, that's <laughs> not even the location. You didn't put the right no. card back down. Oh my gosh. Um, the game continues until um, you beat the third um, villain, the third level villain, once that's done, the game ends and you have won. And com cooperatively you've won, then you can count points to see who wins over all of everyone. But there is also a, um, crypt. No, there's a shadows. The crypt is your discard of these things, so that would be the crypt. But there's something called the shadows, and what happens is some cards can get pulled into the shadows, which is just another discard pile, but when it reaches 10, the villains win and you all lose. So that's how the game ends in a negative light. But that is how you play the game, and now we're going to go over to our conclusion. Alright guys, so now we are on our conclusion of A Touch of Evil from Flying Frog Productions. A deck building game called Dark Gothic A Touch of Evil. So this game was really one of the ones that we really wanted to get. If that made sense. Um, <laughs> and we really wanted this one in our library. Library? If I could speak tonight. Uh, I'm going to let Anna take over so I can go and collect myself. Go collect. <laughs> um, this, yeah, this, I actually texted him a week or two before Gen Con and was like, so, I think I want that Dark Gothic game, um, because we had played it last year at Gen Con with some friends of ours, and we went and talked to him about doing a review, and they were, um, nice enough to give us a review copy, so we were super excited about it. We enjoy the game a lot. It's a good deck builder that I feel like, I like the fact that it's a co-op I mean, I know there's like the, what is it, Legendary that's co-op? I don't remember what I know there's other co-op, but it, you can kind of, it's different. And it has like a really cool theme. And I fe like the fact that they use real pictures on it. Like the art's really cool to look at. Um, yeah, it's really cool that they use real people in these photos. Whether they were, like I said earlier, whether they were paid to be there or if they were voluntarily there. Like if they were just friends. Um, of Flying Frog Productions. Either way, it's really, really cool. They're also credited. The people are credited in the thing. Are um, actors? Yeah, it says cast. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and Scott Hill, uh, not Scott, I'm sorry, Jason Hill. Jason's the one who created the game, and he's the one who gave us the review copy, and he was super awesome to talk to. Scott's very nice, too. We talked to him last year, but he was really busy this year. Um, so it's Scott Hill, but Scott's real first name is Jack? I guess. That's what it says here in the credits. Is that of importance? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> I mean, Jason and Jack, I guess that would be kind of confusing for some people, the J name. So doing Jason and Scott, that's a good idea. Anyways, back to Dark Gothic, a touch of evil. <laughs> um... But yeah, it's it's a good game, and we like it a lot, and it's one we'll continue to play. I don't really play deck builders anymore because I'm probably burnt out on them. Because <laughs> they get well. We played a lot, and everyone came out with a deck builder, and it was always the same thing. You bought stuff in the center row, you got a bunch of points, so hoopla, hoopla. And this one is different, where you yeah, there's other stuff that happens, like you stuff. get curses, I mean, which. We're seeing, uh, yeah. All deck builders seem to have the same <clears throat> mechanic. Yeah. I think this one is one that we wanted 
particularly because it was Steam and you can play it completely co-op. But we play it as co-op competitive. So in a, when we were playing it, uh, like our full games, not, not here in this video, but in our full games, she was constantly putting secrets on me, which were negative points, that I thought that we were both getting these the whole time. And she goes, no, we're playing cooperative competitive. I've been putting all those curses on you, which they're not curses, they're called secrets. But they're negative points, so I say they're a curse. All that, and but, then uh, I was also making him, like, discard cards out of his hand and stuff. Yeah. Um... I mean, to destroy cards, just destroy cards, not just discard them. Like I had to take them out of the game, out of my hand, and everything else. So the, it's a lot of fun, like seeing the <clears throat> attacks that you can do back and forth, uh, as far as destroying each other's cards and stuff like that. And I'm interested to see the expansion, so that's something I want to look into because I want to see how it changes the game. Um, so, but I really I enjoy this game and. That's it, I guess. Yeah, it's and it's kind of like that different style of a game, uh, artwork-wise, and mm -hmm. it's got a lot of stuff that stands out for itself, and it kind of grabs your attention. Like, if somebody came over and was like, what's well, Dark Gothic? Like, I mean, I got our attention. I mean, Dark Gothic, that's, I mean, that's a pretty good... Attention. It, yeah, it was attention. one to like, remember that we played last year, and it was enough to remember to know before even we went to Gen Con that it was something that we wanted to... Yeah, because we played it at Gen Con last year, and then we never saw it, did anything with it throughout the whole year. Didn't even see it at any game stores, I don't think. I don't... Now that I think about it, I never... We, well, we really weren't looking for it either. This but, year. Uh, yeah, we weren't really looking for it either, so I guess we might have passed it by. But, I guess we did go to game stores, but I don't know if we saw it. Yeah, I don't remember seeing it, so... Shadows of Brimstone. I did see a lot of that, though, in a lot of different game stores. If you guys haven't played Shadows of Brimstone, Brimstone, you guys need to check that out. I followed the Kickstarter. I haven't gotten anything for it yet um, due to budgeting, but... If you guys get a chance, check out Shadows of Brimstone, also from Flying Frog Productions. And I think we're just going to wrap this up. Um, yeah, we like it. It's a good game. Pick it up. We don't have any really negatives to say about it. The only thing that I would say negative about the game is that there's not inserts in the middle that separate the cards because the cards kind of end up all together. That's the only negative I'll say. Because I really like the game. Yeah, because... We like to do shake tests with our boxes, and there's some games that we can obviously say, this is not a shake test box. Mm -hmm. So, this one is not a shake test box, so we will be leaving this one flat on the back side of it. And if it had some inserts, it would be really cool, because then we could kind of like stand it up, kind of display it on our shelf and everything, so everybody could see the title when they come over. And this also kind of inspired me to do a little makeup which there's no character that looks like this at all so but it's got the dark gothic look right except for I'm not liquidy white paper face and I didn't wear solid black I had to wear my Punisher but anyways all right so I'm Tim I'm Anna this is Geek Up Game Review Group and this is A Touch of Evil Dark Gothic Deck Building Game by Flying Frog Productions all right we'll see you guys later Oh, no.